Hello, so today we're gonna to be talking about some of the areas that are located northeast of Provo. We're talking about cities like Linden, American Fork, Pleasant Grove, Cedar Hills, Highland, and Alpine, and what you can really expect in those different areas. And we're gonna go ahead and get started right now. This channel is literally everything you need to know about eating, playing, sleeping, working in Salt Lake City, Utah. If you want to know more about that information, consider subscribing down below so you don't miss a thing. So we literally hear from so many people just like you who are moving or relocating to this area. Please feel free to send us a message, a call, a text, and we would absolutely love to help you out. Okay, so... Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna be sharing my screen today and I'm gonna show you a map of Provo, Utah. I'm gonna show you the areas that are surrounding that and the different cities that are surrounding that so you can get a better idea and a better feeling of if this area would be someplace that you actually would want to live or relocate to. So let me go ahead and I'm going to share my screen of where uh, where everything is located. So right up here north, we've got down below here is Provo, Utah. I'll go ahead and zoom in just a little bit. <clears throat> so we've got Provo, Utah is located south of Salt Lake City. So Salt Lake City is obviously our capital here in Utah. We've got an international airport that's up here. And Provo is about 35 minutes away from the Salt Lake International Airport. But interestingly enough, Provo also has its own airport. I'll zoom in over here. It's actually just to the west of Provo. So you can see the Provo airport is actually really close to Utah Lake. And it's a small airport. So you're going to have places like, you know, Spirit Airlines that'll fly into there, Freedom or some of those other small ones. Um, and then obviously the bigger airports will be more up north at the International Airport. But just to quickly give a little um, brief brief thoughts on Provo. So actually, my husband and I lived in Provo. Eric, my husband, he lived there for five years while he was um, going to BYU. I ended up living there a year while he was finishing up grad school. And in fact, kind of funny story, we lived right really, really close to um, actually walking distance to BYU and I'm an avid runner, I love running. And in the winter times, it gets pretty cold. And one really nice thing that I absolutely love, love, love about Utah is they have so many indoor facilities and the in indoor facilities they have, often lots of them have running tracks, they have indoor swimming pools, they have um, all the exercise equipment, everything. And so um, when we were living in Utah, <clears throat> At the time he was finishing up school, we were, um, like I said, we were really close to BYU, but they have something over in BYU called the, um, the what is it called? The Smith Fieldhouse. And I would go and I'd run around the track and they've got an awesome indoor, nice rubber track. So I'd go running there in the winter. It was amazing. Um, now Provo has, it's called the Provo Rec Center and the Provo Rec Center is a fabulous, fabulous place that, um, same thing, indoor facilities that are just incredible. And you will see that. So right over here, let me go ahead. I'm going to zoom in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you from Provo and then we're going to just go north of Provo. And I'm going to show you some of the different cities that are there. So just to give you an idea, um, my husband and I, we actually lived really, really close over here to the brick oven. If you're looking for a good place with like giant yummy breadsticks, the brick oven has these excellent breadsticks that we love. Um, so we actually lived super close to the brick oven and on date nights, we would come right over here to the Provo city library. We used to be able to check out, uh, movies for, I don't know, a buck. I don't even know if they have movies there anymore, but um, we could check out movies very cheaply and we thought that was like the most fun date night ever. Okay. Yeah. We live, we live on the wild side around here. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and zoom out just a little bit. A lot of times I know, especially my husband's roommates and friends that he had that lived 
in the surrounding areas of Utah and um, the Provo area. A lot of times people wanted to be out of the college town. Provo is an awesome town to, you know, to live in and all of that as well. It is more of a college town though. So BYU is a big university there. Um, and if you go just north, I'm going to take you up here. Let me zoom out just a little bit to give you a feel. Okay. So with Provo down here in the south, the next surrounding city is Orem, Utah. And Orem has got lots of different, you know, very family friendly, tons of parks. Um, they've got great schools there. And one thing that's kind of cool over here too, um, if you go just north of Provo, you're going to come over here. You're going to see right over here is the 189 freeway. This is the 189. And I call it a freeway, but it's more like just a highway. And this is actually going to get you into Provo Canyon. Provo Canyon's got tons of awesome parks. It's got a trail system that you can run, bike, hike, and it's all paved. It's a really nice paved um, you know, system over there. And actually, they have lots of marathons through this canyon right here. And my family and I, we always love going to Bridal Veil Falls. Bridal Veil Falls, it's a waterfall that's over there. It's very, there's a nice parking lot and you can park there. A short paved hike to get to the waterfall. And they used to have a bunch of fish that you could like feed the fish. They stopped putting the fish down there, but um, you can still kind of hike up the waterfall, which is awesome. And lots of people here too have asked me about, um, asked me about Sundance. So actually Sundance is right here through Provo Canyon. So you can get from downtown Provo, you can actually get over to Sundance very like you can be there in 20 minutes, right? And you can be here at the Sundance um, Resort. They've got skiing there too. It's a very, it's a small little cozy ski resort, but it's actually amazing to go up there even in, not even in the winter, but in the summer too. You can go up there. They've got a yummy little restaurant. And if you keep on going through this, this is called the Alpine Loop. But if you keep on going, you can get up to Aspen Grove, incredible hikes. We actually personally love taking hikes there in the fall. The changing colors of trees are just incredible. And then actually, if you keep on going, you'll end up getting to Heber. But I won't talk about Heber and Park City today because right now I'm going to focus more on just these northeast um, communities and cities and what you can expect there. So here in Orem, like I said, great schools, lots of good parks. You're going to see more established neighborhoods in Orem than you will in if you go farther west in like Vineyard or even um, Span or Vineyard or Saratoga Springs. You're going to see, like I said, more, more established things in Orem. It's been a lot around longer. Um, there's still some great, and right here it says Harmon's Grocery. Harmon's is kind of like, I like to compare kind of like to a Whole Foods where they've got um, a different, you know, they've got a variety of different things there. But if you keep going up from Orem, you are going to hit the next city, which is Linden. Linden, again, too, similar to Orem, you're actually going to see more established neighborhoods there. Um, there is also quite a big industrial area. So I've noticed that if you're looking for more community, more family friendly, Linden still is, but there's a lot more industrial type of things and things going on there. Um, Orem has some big, uh, big hospital, same thing with Provo. And then if you keep coming up through State Street, and actually I'll zoom out on here just a little bit, but you'll notice coming through all of this, State Street goes all the way up and it just keeps on running all the way up. So, and it just keeps going north. So one of the, the next city that you'll see, so you've got Provo, then you've got Orem, then you've got Linden, and then Pleasant Grove. Pleasant Grove has a lot of new development, a lot of young families that are coming in. Um, they've got this great hike. My family and I have done this hike um, tons of times. It's called Battle Creek Falls. You, like, This one is actually a gravel path, and so you go all the way up, 
and there's a beautiful little waterfall. I want to say it's like just maybe a little bit over a mile there and back. So it's pretty short and, um, but a great family friendly hike. If you're looking for something there, Pleasant Grove also has my kids actually love going. I've got four kids and we love, they love going to this Manila Creek pond and it's just, it's in a little community and it's a man-made pond, but it's big enough where the kids can bring their kayaks, they can bring their paddle boards, and it's a really sandy, beachy area. And so we'll bring a picnic lunch out there in the summer. And for years, they've had fish in the, in the pond too, and they actually stock it with fish. And so my kids had really never been fishing before we moved to Utah. We moved to Utah from California um, several years ago. And at any rate, my kids had never been fishing. And so when they came to Utah, they saw all these kids fishing in this pond and they were like, are you kidding me? Like, we didn't even know you could do this. This is so fun. And so we actually, they had buckets. We graduated to fishing poles, but it was more of just a catch and release. And I don't know. So the pond is really fun for just a, uh, an outing, bring the kids there. It's a big hot spot in the summertime. So you've got Pleasant Grove, um, like I said, lots of new building coming up there. And then also you've got very close to Pleasant Grove. And just to give you an idea too, when I'm talking about moving from one of these cities to the next, this is not taking, there's not a lot of traffic going from one city to the next. So if you're going from Pleasant Grove to Linden, you're talking maybe five minutes. If you're going from Pleasant Grove up here, to American Fork and even from Pleasant Grove to the American Fork Hospital, maybe five minutes. Like it's just, it does not take that long to get around because really there's not a ton of traffic here right now either, um, which is also a wonderful thing. Um, with that being said, American Fork is the next city above Pleasant Grove. And American Fork, you've got a large hospital, you've got American Fork Hospital here. And again, tons of parks all, all around American Fork. And another thing in American Fork that you've got, um, the LDS have um, the Mount Timpanogos Utah Temple. And this is a beautiful area. And across the street from that is a very nice private school called American Heritage. We have, we have a bunch of friends that go there and absolutely love it. So American Fork is another, there's a lot of new building coming up actually right across the street from the temple and all this whole surrounding area, brand new neighborhood, Cadence Homes, um, most of them are starting actually in the millions, like low millions, but right around there. So lots of beautiful new development. And then just to the west of it, you've got this Fox, Fox Hollow Golf Course and Again, lots of, you know, they've got a great driving range there. And then when, same thing, like we've been talking about with parks, Art Die Park, my kids actually play soccer there a lot of times. And it's a great park too. They've got tons of pickleball. I don't know if you're into pickleball, but Utah has, <laughs> has gone crazy for its pickleball. Um, Harvey Park is a new one. So coming up here, so after you've got Pleasant Grove, then you've got American Fork, and then after American Fork, you've got Cedar Hills. So moving just up a little bit more north, you've got Cedar Hills here. Cedar Hills, there is some new building kind of along this east bench over here, but a lot of it too is more established houses that have been built within the you know 2000s or so or before. And, um, but they do have, like I said, they do have some new builds. Homes in Cedar Hills are going to be less expensive than if you're looking at homes in Highland or in Alpine, Utah, which are going to be just a little bit north of that. So Cedar Hills, you're going to get more bang for your buck um, than you would a little bit more north. Again, Cedar Hills has some incredible parks. There's a new one that was just built it's called Harvey Park right here. Um, click on that. Let's see if you can see a picture of it. Yep, you can see a picture. My kids actually love this park. And then one really cool thing, well, there's a lot of really cool things, but something that we really, really enjoy is the trail system that actually runs. I'm going to come back out here again. 
but there is a trail system. It's called the Murdoch Trail. And I remember hearing about it before we moved here. And I remember thinking like, huh, what's the Murdoch Trail? Like, what's that all about? And it's actually a paved trail that goes all the way from Provo, that Provo Canyon that I was showing you. So all the way down here, Provo Canyon, and it cuts right through. So you won't be able to see it on the map here, but this trail system that you can ride, tons of people ride their bikes on there, um, high, you know, and walk and then run. And I've actually gone for many runs on there but it will run you all the way from Provo Canyon and it cuts all the way through these cities. It goes through Orem, it goes through Linden, it goes through Pleasant Grove, it goes all the way up through American Fork, it comes all the way up to Cedar Hills and then up to Highland. And then it actually doesn't go up to Alpine, but it cuts over from Highland and then it will take you over to Lehigh. And so um, we'll do another, I'll do another video sometime on Lehigh because Lehigh is up here a little bit more to the north, uh, northwest a little bit of where we're looking, but um, over in this area here. But um, that trail system is unbelievable and actually there are marathons that take place on the trail or at least parts of the trail that I've run on every year they have right here. So we went from Cedar Hills. And if you go just north a little bit of Cedar Hills, this is um, this is Highland. OK, this is Highland. And if you take the 92 up Highland, just like there was the Provo Canyon, well, 25 minutes, not even 20, yeah, probably about 25 minutes north of Provo Canyon, you're going to get to American Fork Canyon. And American Fork Canyon is an incredible canyon. Tons of people around here love, love, love going to it. And in fact, the Mount Timpanogos, the Timpanogos National Monument is up there. Some incredible caves that you can go hiking through. Um, I run the the Timpanogos half marathon before. And what they do is they'll actually bus you. They'll start down below at, uh, usually they start at American Fork High School and then you'll catch a bus and they'll bus you all the way up through the canyon, 13 mile, you know, a little over 13 miles. And they'll drop you off right up here at, um, at the reservoir. Let's see where it is. Uh, zoom out just a little bit, right up here. So this is Tibble Fork Reservoir. And honestly, this is such a fun place to go. And it's actually amazing to go, I feel like, honestly, all year long, because in the wintertime, the, a lot of times the, the reservoir freezes over. So my kids absolutely love taking their sleds and they'll sled down and because it's all snowy and everything too. Tons of people go out there. There's a nice parking lot up at the front. Um, right here at the Tibble Fork Reservoir. So they'll sled down in the fall time. The colors are incredible, absolutely gorgeous. You see families taking photos out there. The summer is super fun because everybody's out there with their paddle boards, their kayaks, their canoes. Again, bringing a picnic lunch, bringing some music and hanging out there. And then all through this area too, you can keep on going up. I've actually uh, hiked. This is a fabulous hike up here. This is called Silver Creek Trailhead. It's a little bumpy to get to because it's a dirt road. It'll This part here is all paved, but then once you kind of veer off, you'll have to go for about, about a mile um, or so, and it's, it's a little bit bumpy, but definitely worth getting to that Silver Creek because it's incredible. But you'll also notice there's tons of different campsites around here too. And this is all just really wooded and beautiful. There's a stream, you can see the stream that runs down here below as well. And so that creek just, it just goes. And then there is also at the bottom here is the visitor center for the Timpanogos Caves. Very informative and whatnot. So if you're interested in checking that out, that is an awesome thing. So between Provo Canyon, where you've got that whole area up there, You've got this American Fork Canyon that is literally minutes away from, um, from Highland and Cedar Hills. And 
So like from Highland, you've got, you know, it's five minutes to get to the main entrance right here of the Timpanogos Caves. And then, um, and then, you know, you can keep going. Another really cool thing about this Highland, Alpine, and Cedar Hills area are the number of golf courses. There's quite a few golf courses, if that's your thing. There's the Alpine Country Club. This one is a private, um, private membership for that. But Cedar Hills um, Golf Club, you know, the course is not. So there are different options. Same thing with Fox Hollow is not. So lots of different options for that. Highland Utah or Highland Utah has become a lot there there's a lot of established area there but there's also a lot of new building and you're going to end up finding um areas there with new builds not new builds but you're looking at prices starting right around the 700s for where you know you're looking at a 3500 square foot home starting at the seven or 800s and then going all the way up to well over a million but one of the nice things too about Highland is they've got a nice little, let's see where it is, um, very close. Yes, right over here. So very close to the, um, the Alpine Country Club, you're gonna end up seeing, this is like the town square kind of over here. And they've got a very nice, beautiful library, which is right here. They've got nice splash pads. So I feel like, um, Highland has done a good job of having a lot of family friendly things there as well. And then finally, our last stop for today is up here to Alpine, Utah. Alpine is a more exclusive, luxurious sort of community. Um, although there are a lot of farm farmlands and there are, you know, the small town feel of what it was before. A lot of people have been doing, you know, custom builds up here, but again, a beautiful area. There's some great schools here, Mountainville Academy. They have, that's a charter school. They also have Alpine Elementary School. That's right over here. And then they've got some, you know, some big parks here too that are awesome. They've got Burgess Park, Creekside Park, that's there. Um, Creekside has tennis courts. Burgess has pickleball courts, which we have loved going to those, both of them. Um, Creekside has a splash pod for the kids, which they all love. And then if you go up just a little bit higher, some really cool hikes here in Alpine as well. Um, the first one is this one. It's called the Three Falls Trailhead. And if you, when you drive up here, really from the Alpine, you know, main street, to get up here is, I don't know, maybe eight to 10 minutes. It's really not that far. And beautiful views overlooking the entire, you'll be able to see Utah Lake. You'll be able to see all sorts of things if you go up to there. And then a couple other, two last things I wanted to share with you. One is Lambert Park. Lambert Park is a pretty cool area because um, same thing, there's a couple different pavilions there. You'll see families taking pictures there, lots of mountain bikers. So if you're into mountain biking, this is definitely a park that you wanna check out, Lambert Park. Um, and then if you keep going up a little bit farther past Lambert Park, you're going to get up here. And again, this looks far because I'm kind of zoomed in, but from where it is to this other hike that I'm gonna show you, it's called Horsetail Falls. And Horsetail Falls right up here um, is a great hike that'll take you up to a more beautiful waterfalls. This one is good, not so much in the wintertime. I, I haven't done this one in the wintertime just because it gets really snowy and kind of icy. But in the fall and the summer, absolutely gorgeous. Goes up to a waterfall. You can overlook everything. Beautiful lush trees everywhere. So anyway, this kind of gives you an overview of some different cities and different areas. Um, if you are considering, like I said, I've had lots of people that have been interested in looking at Provo and then they're like, oh, well, are there any cities that I might be interested in taking a look at or anything that might pique my interest that is northeast of Provo? And that kind of gives you an idea of some cities that we talked about, Provo, Linden, American Fork, Pleasant Grove, Orem, Cedar Hills, Highland, Alpine. So if you are thinking about relocating to this beautiful city of Salt Lake City, 
and are thinking about areas near Provo, please reach out, give us a call. We hear from people like you all the time who are looking to make a move or relocating, and we would love to help you out.